Coronavirus cases are still rising across the globe, having now infected more than 133 million people. Europe is experiencing its third wave. There are new spikes in India and Brazil and here in South Korea. The country has been on the verge of declaring a, new, a fourth wave as new daily COVID cases here in South Korea were topping 700 on Thursday for the first time in over 90 days. With a stronger variant hitting countries hard, it seems all the more important to get vaccines rolled out as quickly as possible. But there's been concern and some confusion over the safety of AstraZeneca vaccines due to the possible links with blood clots. Although regulators and the World Health Organization say that the cases are still very rare, a number of countries have stopped using the Oxford vaccine to inoculate their younger population. We discussed the possible risks and how the authorities has, have been responding around the world. And for this, I'm joined by Dr. Fahid Hemetzadeh, Associate Professor in Virology at the University of Adelaide, and Dr. David Kwak, Professor of Family Medicine and, Physici and a Physician at the Sun Chanyang University Hospital in Seoul. Very good morning to you both. Thank you for joining us. And well, there's quite a lot of ground to cover, but uh, so we'll go straight into the questions, starting with you, Dr. Fahid. Now, the European Medicines Agency it said that there was a causal link between AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine and the reported blood clots, although it did add that evaluation is still underway to reach a final conclusion. What do scientists know about the possible link at this point? And should it really uh, worry us enough to be halting these vaccination plans? So first of all, good morning to you and thanks for the opportunity. Um, the AstraZeneca vaccine um, contains four different components and we need to consider each component separately to see where the risk is uh, come from. Um, the four components of the virus contains the spike protein of the COVID that's recombinantly expressed at the surface of an adenovirus. This adenovirus that's um, specifically used in the um, AstraZeneca um, vaccine is the chimpanzee um, adenovirus, very close to the um, common cold um, virus to, uh, to the human. Um, the, the adenovirus itself, the adenovirus itself has a kind of um, toxic proteins, we call it pentan protein. And historically, we know that the pentan protein may be, um, may, um, may, or possibly linked with some, say, cellular disorders or the toxic, in, um, toxic effects in the ho host cells. But very, very rare um, doc documents exist in the world that link between the adenoviruses and the blood clots. Uh, probably two or three publications clearly mentioned that the um, the adenoviruses itself means the live adenoviruses. I'll I'll talk about that a, a little bit later. The live adenoviruses link with the blood clot disorders in human, and in some cases they recovered adenoviruses from the blood clots in human. But the things that exist in this vaccine um, is it is in, first it is a not propagative virus in uh, in our body. Actually, it is pro propagated in the cell culture, but not pro uh, propagated in, in our body. The dose that we received from the AstraZeneca vaccine is very low, and it is not comparable with the high dose of the exposure to the live virus that caused that blood, blood disorders. The third component of each of this vaccine is the cell culture components or the cell culture substances that we have. Um, as a residue into the vaccine. Um, the cell culture media and the cell culture substances are um, like the uh, very complex uh, components and the materials that, that we use. And the, some of the residues might or might not be linked with those kinds of the disorders. Um, um, a publication or a document recently released that they say it's kind of the similarities between one of the, um, the components in the cell culture media and the, um, the bl blood clotting disorders exist or the studied, but you know, nothing, nothing confirmed by now. And the fourth component of the vaccine is the adjuvant, means the, the, um, the material that help for stimulating of the uh, immune, um, immune responses. Um, in COVID, in specific COVID cases, the, um, the viral components 
that stimulate blood clotting disorders. We know that in, um, in say, very high number, I'll, I'll go through that a little bit later, in high number of the, of the cases, we have blood clotting disorders and the thrombosis in, uh, in COVID cases. Um, but, you know, um, that, um, that particular say, pathogenesis by the COVID um, stimulate by a nucleoprotein of the virus. Nucleoprotein of the virus stimulate both of the complement and the um, pro-inflammatory, um, say, pathways that these two help <coughs> for using the blood clots. The nucleoprotein doesn't exist in AstraZeneca vaccine, means no link between the blood clotting disorders and the structure of the vaccine. So that's, that's why um, it, it needs to be studied in more epidemiological and the case studies. So yeah, we like need to separate. Yes, yeah, yeah. so it looks like there's a lot more um, studies to be done on this and well, well, but countries they've been they've they have their populations to answer to so they've been uh, responding as fast as possible which may not always be the best solution but there were concerns about how um, dangerous these blood clots are and um, whether they can be treated in time dr david and how have south korean authorities been reacting to these reports and how do you see the risk well, the Korean government is also trying to take this um, uh, most careful approach to this as possible. So they're uh, temporarily postponing um, the shots being currently given to people who are less than 65 years of age. Uh, they'll probably make their own decision uh, through the weekend and make an announcement in regards to that. But the risk, uh, so this is rather my personal opinion, if we compare the numbers the, that we used to see in these younger generations of having this blood clot problem uh, per month, a monthly, we would uh, have been able to see about 0.4 cases out of a million people of population. And with the vaccinations, the number we are currently uh, seeing is one out of 700,000 um, people vaccinated. So in comparison, yes, it is significantly higher than what we used to see before, but it's still very, very minimal in the sense that it, it, the case that we're seeing is out of uh, hundreds of thousands and not, if not uh, millions of people. So we, we, ha we would have to carefully calculate the risk and benefit ratio, uh, just like the European countries are doing. Uh, I believe a country is uh, stating that the risk to benefit ratio the benefit clearly outweighs the uh, risk in the elderly um, age groups, uh, not so much in the younger generations. Uh, we would have to calculate those specific numbers for our own case and make decisions uh, based on that. But I believe um, in, in our case, though, because uh, we don't have too many other options to currently uh, inoculate people with, um, it, it, it's, it, uh, I can speculate that we are going to uh, take an approach that we be as careful as we can, but still go ahead with the plan, original plan, to inoculate most everybody with uh, the AstraZeneca vaccines that we currently have hold of. And Dr. David, over here, South Korea, um, well, as you mentioned, we stopped administering as AstraZeneca shots for people under 60. And well, many are worried that that's going to cause a further slowdown to the vaccination program here, which uh, hasn't been on schedule. What has been the reason for the very slow pace of inoculating people here in the country? And do you expect the pace to pick up when, um, I mean, have, with the government having approved the uh, one dose Janssen vaccine this week? Well, um, I think it's more of the logistic matter that that's rather slowing down the pace for us. It's um, we're, we're being short of the, the vaccines that were supposed to be imported to our country already. Uh, but even with those that are already inside the country, we're having uh, trouble distributing them to the people originally as planned because of, of these blood clotting issues. But I don't think it'll necessarily slow down the whole progress that was planned before, meaning uh, achieving uh, herd immunity uh, before the end of the year. Uh, because, as, as you said, w with other options of vaccines uh, currently being studied, such as Johnson & Johnson Janssen's, also possibly, and I'm, this is only my personal speculation, 
but uh, those with Novavax uh, vaccine also currently manufactured on our soil. And other options like Moderna and Pfizer, we could still get our hands on if we uh, strike a deal with those companies, uh, could sort of lead our, uh, our, our way out of this uh, pothole that we're currently temporarily having. So I don't foresee that this is some, something like a doomsday that we're out of uh, complete, uh, we're out completely of any options. Uh, if we ha plan ahead uh, something alternative for the future, we might come back to the, uh, the, uh, the good progress that we were having to achieve a herd immunity within the country as well. Well, Dr. Fahad, over in Europe, it seems that there's been a lot more confusion there as the uh, European Medicines Agency, they recommended no age restrictions to taking the AstraZeneca vaccine, um, stressing that it's the benefits still outweigh the risks. But uh, Britain recommended that young people take other vaccines and now other countries in, um, on, in continental Europe, like Spain and Italy, they're uh, following suit. Is there a heightened risk among certain groups of people? Um, actually, epidemiologically, um, the answer is um, no, uh, because when we compare the population who received um, this vaccine, it is, um, say, more than 27 million of the people who received that vaccine and only 86 of the cases with, uh, I think, 18 deaths reported. Um, I don't want to say we need to, we need to ignore that. Of course, we need to consider that, but, you know, population-wise, still the benefits is much, much, much higher than the, um, than, than the risks. And of course, in population medicine, we always need to think about the um, benefits to the risks. Um, of course, every vaccine in the world, even say one of the most safest one that um, I, I can, I can, um, I can um, call it um, polio vaccine, still has its own risks. We, we cannot use the polio vaccine in, in immunocompromised people. That's why um, for the flu, for the people who has the egg allergy, we cannot use the flu vaccine. For the measles, we have the risk of, say, one per, say, five, five million of the, the risk of the um, 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 encephalomyelitis. Because of those risks, we never say we need to stop vaccination because of the population-wise, the benefits of those vaccines are much higher than the, um, than the uh, no vaccination. For example, the risk for the blood clotting disorders is um, 30 to 70 percent of the hospitalized people due to the COVID, which is huge number of the people are at risk for the, those blood clotting disorders if they do not receive the vaccine. But the risk for the um, blood clotting disorders due to the existing information that we have is one per 29,000 people, means um, within 25 million of the people who received the vaccine, we have 86 of the cases of the blood clot disorder. Still, the benefits are, are huge, and we need to consider that. Um, mainly, if you want to consider the, um, the safety of the, the existing vaccines for the COVID, everyone believes that virologists, um, the vaccinologists, the producer or, and the health authorities believe that the AstraZeneca vaccine is one of the safest vaccines exist in the list. So Dr. Fahoud, would you say that um, we can expect to see more side effects uh, from other vaccines? There has been a lot of focus on the AstraZeneca one, but as we keep going forward, should we brace ourselves to see all sorts of uh, side effects emerging, but at the same time knowing that um, these are expected in a way to happen and scientists are doing their best to keep um, these side effects low? Of, of course, we can consider the side effects and we, can, we, we have to consider the, the risk for the vaccine, vaccine break and the risk for the any other side effects. Mostly, um, those those side effects appear after the second and the third, or probably um, yearly, or um, say what whatever boosting period that we that we required for for those vaccines. Um, yeah, the risk for the other vaccines are are still considerable. Um, for example, um, for the Pfizer vaccine, it says it might be linked with the, with kind of those immunocompromised or um, say immunologic disorders for the um, for the um, uh, the Russian vaccine of Sput Sputnik uh, because it, it uh, they use exactly the same um, same 
same backbone, but because it is already killed virus, we need to use more and more um, virus particle per dose. That's why they, we, we produce more stronger um, immune response against the adeno adenoviral um, particles rather than the, the targeted um, um, spike protein. You know, in long term, we need to put all of those risks together and the list the best ever op options within the, um, say, va vaccine list. And by now, because, you know, none of them um, has aged more than, say, more than six months in, in the, say, human population. In the, a little bit longer term, means in two to three years, we need to consider all of those possible risks and the failures. Because, you know, vaccine failure is another risk might be linked with with, uh, with, with the other, other vaccines I see. and how to... Well, I'm afraid we're out of time today, so this is where we're going to have to um, finish our discussion today. Uh, my apologies there, but well, well, this is where we'll wrap up today. That was Dr. Fahid Hemetzadeh, Associate Professor in Virology at the University of Adelaide, and Dr. David Kwak at the Sun Chalang University Hospital in Seoul. Thank you both very much for your time this morning. Thank you very Thank much, you for having us. Thank you. My pleasure. And to our viewers, as always, thank you very much for watching.